Hello everyone, welcome to your weekly tech update, the show that explores the newest, coolest, and craziest side of tech available on the interwebs. I'm your host, Ray McNeil. Apologies for the very echoey room. We are currently in the process of moving, setting up a new studio, and getting it all ready, and it's just not quite there yet. So until then, yeah, I'm going to be broadcasting from a concreted floor room that has a bit of echo to it. Apologies. But I do have some really cool tech to show off to you. Today, we're talking about zero latency. The VR attraction ditches their backpack PCs in favor of the Vive Focus 3 and wireless rendering. A Multiverses trailer debuts Ultra Instinct Shaggy and the perfect Iron Giant team-up. Happening in this week's What The... This odd bike thing from Italy, but it's awesome. And of course, we'll wrap up the program with this week's Moment of Joy. All that and a whole lot more coming up on today's edition of your weekly tech update next. Zero Latency, one of the longest-running VR attractions in the out-of-home VR space, is dropping the backpack PCs that were once the backbone of the platform. Now, the company says it's moving to standalone Vive Focus 3 headsets with wireless delivery of PC-rendered VR content. Unlike a VR arcade, which lets customers play consumer VR content, Zero Latency is a VR attraction offering totally unique multi-user VR experiences designed to be played in a large shared area. The company which offers up its platform and experiences to franchises has steadily upgraded its VR tech as the space has developed. Early on, the system relied on a custom backpack PC paired with the OS VR HDK2 headsets and an optical overhead tracking system. Now, eventually, the company moved to purpose-built VR backpacks and first-gen Windows Mixed Reality headsets from HP, which allowed it to streamline the system considerably by dropping the overhead tracking in favor of the Windows Mixed Reality inside-out tracking. Now, Zero Latency has announced its latest update, and it's a doozy. The uh, system, which further streamlines the setup by opting for the standalone Vive Focus 3 and streaming PC rendered content wirelessly to the headsets. The company says it's streaming over a local Wi-Fi 6E network, which purportedly offers lower latency than prior Wi-Fi revisions. That means dropping the VR backpacks entirely, which not only reduces the cost of the system, but significantly reduces complexity for both operators and users. Operators don't need to clean, charge, or maintain the backpack units anymore, and it's one less step during onboarding, which means more playtime for the users. And while other standalone headsets like the Quest 2 might have been an option, HTC's Vive Focus 3 has a couple of unique advantages for out-of-home use, especially its swappable battery, which reduces the number of headsets needed on hand as the batteries can be charged independently and then swapped out on the fly. That is very, very cool. On the content side, zero latency locations continue to offer the same experiences as before, which span cooperative and competitive multiplayer experiences with up to eight simultaneous players. Though, given the company's knack for innovation in their in-house content, it'll be interesting to see if the move to a more simplified system will unlock potential for experiences that wouldn't quite work with the bulkier setup. Given today's announcement, it'll likely be some time before the upgrade rolls out to existing zero latency locations, but it seems the company will be offering this upgraded version of the system to new franchisees going forward. Yet another version of Skyrim is here, as one fan has remade a portion of the acclaimed RPG in 
Unreal Engine 5. Skyrim's Riverwood has been rebuilt in Epic Games' recently released top-of-the-line engine, which is the perfect fodder while we wait for The Elder Scrolls 6. The Redditor responsible shared their creation in a five-minute video spotted by Games Radar. The clip walks through the classic Skyrim settlement, showing off a few of its buildings and streets in dazzling graphical fidelity. It then cuts to what looks like the Western Watchtower in White Run, although this ruined outpost is a lot more detailed than the one you might be used to seeing. The graphical upgrade is remarkably impressive. All the textures are rendered at a higher resolution, the lighting is crisper, and the shadows a lot punchier. It certainly doesn't look like a game that was released on the PS3 and the Xbox 360. The video doesn't only serve as an impressive tech demo, it's an exciting glimpse into what games could one day look like. As developers become practiced with the Unreal Engine 5, its technical potential will only be pushed to the limit. However, it's unlikely we'll be seeing any Elder Scrolls game that looks like this anytime soon. Bethesda tends to use its in-house creation engine to construct its games, and while Starfield will use a newer version of the software, I don't really expect it to uh, match up with the graphical potential of the Unreal Engine 5. As fan-made projects like this one show, Epic's recently released engine is top of the pack. In fact, it can produce such lifelike renders that a recent demo created with the software tricked viewers into believing it was real footage taken with a mobile phone. But while Bethesda might not be leaping on Unreal Engine 5, plenty of other developers are. CD Projekt Red previously announced it'll be ditching its own Red Engine in favor of Epic Software for The Witcher 4. The news came as a surprise to many given just how successfully the Red Engine had been employed to create the vibrant world of The Witcher 3, but goes to show just how much faith the studio's putting in the tech. Similarly, BioWare is using the engine to develop Mass Effect 4, placing another feather in Epic's game-building cap. Don't expect those games to look quite as brilliant as this fan-made Skyrim project, though. As sprawling RPGs go, they'll have to sacrifice graphical fidelity in favor of fast asset loading, higher frame rates, and other player-facing considerations. But the Redditor's demo certainly goes some way to suggest what our favorite video games might one day look like. Oh, for all you Marvel fans out there, and more importantly, Stan Lee fans, this one... I'm excited about. Stan Lee was the godfather of the Marvel Universe. Lee and artist Jack Kirby were responsible for creating many of the heroes generating billions of dollars on the big screen today, including the Avengers, X-Men, and Fantastic Four. Even casual fans and those unfamiliar with Marvel know who Stan Lee is thanks in part to his famous cameos. To honor his service to the Marvel Universe, Lee made cameo appearances in almost every major Marvel movie, film, and series over the years, at least until his passing in 2018. Lee's big screen flybys became an iconic feature of the MCU, and sadly his last opportunity came with 2019's Avengers Endgame, a fitting point for his final cameo. In the years since, Marvel has remained cautious about how it uses Stan Lee's likeness after his passing. The company even shut down plans for him to appear in the Simpsons short The Good, The Bart, and The Loki due to a policy of leaving behind his cameo after his death. But how Marvel Studios uses Lee's likeness may be about to change thanks to a new deal reached by the studio. The Hollywood Reporter exclusively revealed Marvel Studios inked a 20-year deal with Stan Lee Universe to use the likeness and name of the iconic comic creator in movies, TV, Disney theme parks, merchandise, and other experiences as well. You heard me right, Stan Lee 
is going to make a comeback. Marvel Studios, thanks to the deal, will now have the right to use Lee's name, likeness, and signature on the big and small screens on top of images, footage, and audio recordings related to him. Disney theme parks, cruise lines, and park merchandise will now be able to use his name, voice, likeness, and signature as well. Through its policy to avoid cameos from Stan Lee after his passing, Marvel Studios demonstrated its commitment to honoring the creator's legacy in a respectful way. Who knows how Marvel and Disney now intend to use his likeness, but theme parks look to have been a significant element of the deal. 